Hello, welcome to Business Spotlight and today I have got George Tom with me today of VT Wealth. So George, thank you very much for coming along today. How are you doing? Good, Mark, and uh, looking forward to the to the session with you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Looking forward to having you, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, so, uh, George, uh, just first off, tell us a little bit about yourself and VT Wealth then. Okay, yeah. So VT Wealth, we're a partner practice or senior partner practice of St. James's Place Wealth Management, which is the largest wealth management business in the in the UK um, and we set up um, the business in February 2016. Um, my wife's the kind of principal founder uh, of the business. I've been involved in day one and fully involved in the last two and a half years. Excellent, excellent. And uh, but you're the operations director, is that correct, yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah. So the kind of, so my, my wife, you know, her, is over 25 years as a financial advisor. Um, my background, I had 38 years in the Royal Bank and in that West and more of a kind of leadership role laterally. So my role in the business, I guess it's from, it, it's probably all the things that my wife doesn't like doing actually, which which I do like doing. It's the operational side, it's the people management, um, the marketing the finance, strategy, client service, and risk. So all the kind of operational functions I'm responsible for, which allows my wife to kind of concentrate on what she loves doing is kind of seeing clients and helping clients. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. It seems, sounds like you've got a really good system going there. So that's that's brilliant. It, um, it, works, it works well, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, how did you find that jump then from, uh, I think you said it was Nat West? Nat West um, and Royal Bank, yes. And Royal Bank, yeah. How did you find that jump from going from these uh, massive organisations to, uh, I suppose, then running your own organisation? How did, how did you find that then, George? Very different, very different, because, because when you're used to a culture of a huge organisation for so long, it it takes a bit of time to kind of adapt um, to running your own business, particularly a husband and wife team. Um, and we've got our moments, but we're kind of, we, we, because we do different things in the business, it, it, it kind of works. So, and and I guess I quite enjoyed the fact that we, we can make our own decisions um, in running the business. Some of them have worked, some of them haven't, um, but you've got the freedom to try things as you wish within your own values, as opposed to kind of operating within a corporate environment. Um, so, I mean, I, I loved and enjoyed my 30 year, you know, banking career, um, but I'm equally loving what I'm doing today. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, sounds like it. Um, and what has your biggest learning been then since you've been a business owner? Eh... Uh... I guess it's probably adapting, adapting to change and embracing change. Um, you know, because particularly in recent times, we've had the kind of COVID situation. Um, so initially, it was adapting from being an employee in a corporate structure to running your own business, um, working closely with my wife. So that's another change. Always good to embrace that. Um, but everything associated with COVID, um, and, and, I, and I think that was the key thing, that we did embrace change. We adapted quickly. Some of it we had to do. Um, some of what we've done. So that's probably the biggest, I would say, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, when, um, when you first went into uh this industry did you always see yourself eventually going uh into uh your own business and work i suppose being your own boss or being the boss no, no um i didn't say i was the boss now i just said it's a sort of <laughs> husband and wife situation here um n no because I, I got at 55 which was seven years ago i got the opportunity for a voluntary redundancy package from the bank um, so it was an opportunity. I, I love my career, but it was an opportunity that it was the right time to take it. 
Um, and round about the same time, um, my, my wife had an opportunity as well to set up her own business, having been a financial advisor in the Royal Bank. So it all came together simultaneously, really. Um, and we hadn't envisaged how the business would grow because um, very much it was kind of working from home, but it's kind of grown to a level now where we have got um, over 700 clients and work from two offices, a team of 11. Um, so it's grown a lot more than we envisaged in day one. Um, and that's, and that's, it means positive, and it, but growth needs managed as well. And, and and that's what I enjoy enjoy doing, Mark. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And um, is there any sort of plans or uh, dreams for it to keep growing? Is there, um, you know, how does it look for you in the next five years? Then for yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're we're fortunate, or you can uh, you, you, I guess you can influence your own fortune in terms of your kind of work ethic and, and what you do. But we have grown year on year and I include the COVID years there. Um, we have a growth strategy to continue to grow in the next five years. In our world, growth is funds under management, which is basically a combination of investments and pension funds that we look after. Um, growth with number of clients as well. Um, and also grow through people um, because we've been able to give the opportunity to, to help people come into our business, um, younger people as well to maybe start a career in financial services. So it's so we're geared for growth, um, and that includes clients and also bringing new people in as well. And you know, from a, a succession point of view and legacy, we're kind of keen to build and build our own our own team. Fantastic. And um, what um, opportunities are there going to be in the next five years? Do you think for um in the fi in the finance industry? Then, well, I'm 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 a big um, believer here that face to face advice is important in the world we're in. Um, and because of all the kind of change in regulation and financial services, um, you know, the average age of a financial advisor in the UK is fifty six. Um, so you know the age and statistics and 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 change would suggest that you know there will be less and and, and there's there's something like two hundred thousand less financial advisors there were twenty five years ago. Um, so the opportunities are there. Um, we have grown because we offer face to face advice from our two offices. Um, we also have been more face to face virtually. Zoom and Teams, which we've had to adapt through change as well with with, with COVID, um, but most people like the face to face contact mark, um, and uh, we envisage that kind of continuing. Excellent. So the opportunities in the sector we're in are strong, are strong. Fantastic. Um, at Action Coach, we really, um, we really invest ourselves a lot in uh mindset and uh mm -hmm. education, you know, because it's always changing. Things in business always change, you know. Yes, and we, yeah. we need to keep up with that. And we yeah. we often find that reading books or listening podcasts, watching interviews like this, um, are very inspiring. So, yeah. what what is the most inspiring to you today, then, George? Inspiring in terms of books or models, or it could be any, it could be anything, you know. Uh, yeah, books, models. Is there anyone out there right now that's inspiring you? That's really, um, and it could be someone in the in the financial sector. I mean, I mean, I guess if I look at kind of a leader or somebody that's been successful, I probably go in the world of sport. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big football fan and I can't really look further than so Alec Ferguson, you know, and, and in terms, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a Man United fan, um, but, you know, in terms of results, I think, I think it's fair to say, I think he's delivered something like 50 major trophies, European in England and, and in Scotland. He, he's given youth a chance over the years and that's what we're, we're looking to do in this business as well. 
I think one of the things that, that I admired Alec Ferguson for, or Sir Alex, Sir Alex, is his resilience. It hasn't always been plain sailing, um, particularly in his early years, and also latterly as well. But he's he's kind of overcome them. I, I talked about change earlier. Uh, the world of the football management and football changed over the last well, twenty five years. I think he was a manager, um, and I guess it. With the 25 years, if you longevity, if you do it over a long period of time, that's how I probably more succeed. I, I admire people who've had success over that long period, stuck to their values. Um, it's easy to be successful short term, but if you do it longer term, so so he's he's um, he, he, I admire from a success point of view. The model I can I like. To work on, I like kind of Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. I I've, I've used that since we set up in business. Um, you know the seven habits. You know, kind of including start with the end in mind. So we every year when we plan the year ahead to say, well, what are our goals for for twelve months time, five years time, ten years? We'll work towards it. So Covey's principles and habits. I adapt and I and I like it. Yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. So a cu- couple of inspirations there. That's, that's yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you kind of touched a little bit on uh Alex Ferguson and how he used used to develop and bring yes. in a lot of young young people. Um how how do you think um or sorry Young people, and do you have a lot of young people in your organisation? And if so, you know, um, do you embrace that again? Kind of like Alex Ferguson, it's all about you know looking to the future and everything, and bringing in younger people. And yeah, is it I mean, successful. I mean, they're all, I mean, they're all younger than me in the business, and that's uh, probably not hard to work out. But no, yes, I mean, I mean, for example, um, we brought in Ross. Um, three and a half years ago, who graduated from university. Uh, we give him an opportunity as an administrator. He's progressed to be a part of planner. Um, he's gone through the St. James's Place Advisor Academy. Um, he just came out last month and he's going to be an advisor in our practice. Um, in that way, Ross has worked for us for three and a half years. He knows how we operate. He knows our values. Um, We've been loyal to him. Ross has been loyal to us. And we're away to give him a platform now to become an advisor in, in our practice. And that's a model that I'm keen to kind of replicate um, as well. Because um, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, Mark, our role is to help people, you know, to, to, to protect them, to start a wealth journey, create a wealth journey. And at the other end as well, to make sure from a legacy point of view that their wealth is distributed in a way that the they want. And you know, and uh, it's a fairly simple, simple industry uh, and profession. Um, but it's a really, really good and rewarding one. Excellent. Excellent. Uh George, you've you've been great to speak to, so thank you very much. I've I've just got one question for you. <laughs> uh one last question. Um if you could give advice to your 18-year-old self, what would it be? That's a good one. Um, well, interesting. Yesterday, 30th of May, was 45 years to the day I started work as a 17-year-old. Um, so not, not 18, 17. Um, advice, um, I guess, it's, or maybe two things, Mark. One is maybe to repeat some of the things I did do. So um, I've always had an appetite to, to learn and listen to people. You know, I was told very early on, if you keep speaking, you learn nothing new. Um, so I think listening is a really good quality. Um, my mom had a phrase, um, good, better, best, never let it rest, till your good is your better and your better best. Um, she drummed that into me, and 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 I think I would repeat. I'd like to think 
you know, I come from a humble family. Um, my mum always said, stay humble, um, be authentic, work hard, be the best you can be. So I would probably, the advice I would say, repeat what I was instilled in me as a 17, 18 year old. Um, in terms of advice that I would do things differently, um, I would probably as a person travel earlier. Um, I mean, you know, not kind of, <laughs> leave work early in the morning but travel around the world I would probably be less committed than I was I got married early um and and, and I had kids early and that influenced what I did um and I guess I would probably give advice to have more belief in yourself because um I think it's important from being yourself and being humble that you know, I probably didn't think I was as good as people that maybe, maybe from a wealthier background than me and my and, and my upbringing, um, and I would probably instill more belief in myself at a younger age, despite maybe perceiving that others had maybe more wealth or more opportunities than me. Uh, so maybe a bit more belief, I guess. But a lot of the values that was instilled on me, you know, I think have stood me well in time. Um, sometimes I thought the grass was greener to, to move. In, in a banking career, I moved a lot in 38 years. Um, I'm now back in the Aberdeen area where I started, which is great. Um, so, um, yeah, so partly repeat what I did do, but also can I maybe do things a little bit differently and also maybe have a bit of belief in my own ability and, and myself as a person, because you are who you are. And I always think, rather than try to pretend to be somebody else, you're better to be yourself and people take it face value. I don't know if that answers, but it's that's my answer anyway, Mark. I don't know if it's the right answer, but that's my answer. There are, there are no wrong answers, is what I'd say. Oh. I thought that was a very good answer as well, George. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Very, very inspiring, if I must say, you know, to anyone listening um what i got from that was you know just you know don't 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 have any regrets you know and you no. just did a lot of good things there you know about having belief in yourself um and go for it you know i i absolutely love that so you know what it was the right answer George. <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> Thank you very much, George. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on the call with us and uh, yeah for this interview. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Me too. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. You've been watching Business Spotlight and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.